Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech and iOS 18 and iPadOS 18 bring a ton of new features to your current generation and future generation iPhone and iPads. However, some of those features will not make their way onto older devices. So just like I covered with the iOS 18 updates, I thought we'd cover every iPadOS 18 feature not available on older devices. Now, the first thing is supported devices in general for iPad OS 18. You'll need an iPad Pro M4, both 11 or 13 inch, iPad Pro 12.9 inch, third gen and later, iPad Pro 11 inch, first gen and later, iPad Air M2, iPad Air third generation and later, iPad seventh gen and later, or iPad mini fifth generation and later. If you have one of those devices, you'll be able to update to iPad OS 18. Now, one of the major features Apple announced this year is Apple intelligence. However, that will not be coming to all devices. So this will only be available. Apple intelligence, which brings a bunch of on device AI will only be available on iPad pro and iPad air with M one or later processors. So you'll need an M one M two or M four processor to run Apple intelligence on the device, whether or not the overall updated Siri is going to be available. We don't really know, but either way, Apple intelligence will not be on some of those older devices. You'll need something with an M one or later. With the latest introduction of the new iPad Air and iPad Pro models, if we go into settings and then we go down to battery, within battery, we can go to battery health on the new iPads. This was available in iPad OS 17, but is not available in iPad OS 18. You'll see here's a 10th generation iPad. And if we go to battery here and then we let it load, it just doesn't have the option. It looks like Apple's doing the exact same thing they did on the iPhone, where only the iPhone 15 models support the battery health with different charging limits and things like that. So unfortunately, they're not bringing that feature to older iPads, even with iPad OS 18. One of the new features Apple showed off has to do with notes and using the Apple pencil. If we go into notes with the Apple pencil, there's a new feature called smart script. You could say, hi, this is Aaron from Zolotech. And you'll see it already corrected what it looked like as I was typing it. You'll see it just made it a little bit cleaner, actually tidied it up a little bit and you can press and hold on this. And then you actually have options for that to straighten it out or change it or just sort of modify it. This is only available on specific things and it's called smart script. What that means it's available on iPad pro M4 iPad pro 12.9 inch fifth generation and later iPad pro 11 inch third generation and later iPad air M2 iPad air 10.9 inch fourth gen and later iPad 10th generation and iPad mini sixth generation. Any other supported device will not support that specific feature. However, the new feature called math notes is available on all iPads. So if we open up a new note here and we just go ahead and write six plus 12 equals, it should solve that for us and give us the information. So it solved it and that should be available on the older devices. So that's great to see come across to all of the devices. Now there is one catch with it. It's available with variables created using the Latin alphabet. So if it's not using the Latin alphabet, so if we do another one where 12 divided by four equals, it should solve that very simple solve. And then it gives three and it tries to keep it writing just like you are with smart script. So again, this is only available using the Latin alphabet, but works on all supported iPads. One of the new features that's coming available with accessibility has to do with eye tracking. It's a great way to control the iPad. If you're having limited mobility with your hands and that's available on specific iPads as well under accessibility. Within accessibility, if we go down, you'll actually see it here where it says eye tracking. If you use this, you can set this up and then use your eyes to look around the iPad and sort of control everything. So if we turn it on here, you'll have to follow the dot and it looks like they learned some of this from the vision pro. So if I set it up here, I'll look at the dot. Once it's set up, you can see I'm looking around, I'm looking at eye tracking, looking at the switch and it turned back off. And then I can look at yes. And it's something that's a little bit tricky to use. And I am wearing glasses, but it's in the early stages here and it does work. But again, this is limited to specific iPads. So it's limited to the iPad pro M4 iPad pro 12.9 inch fifth gen and later iPad pro 11 inch third generation and later iPad 10th generation iPad air M2 iPad air third gen and later and iPad mini sixth generation and later. So if you're wanting to use that and you'll find that actually helpful and you want to use eye tracking, you'll need one of those iPads to use it. One new feature is live audio transcription. 
The great news is this feature works across all iPads. If you go onto your iPad, tap the little attachment button, go to record audio, you'll have this icon in the upper right that will transcribe what's said in real time on your display. Now there is a catch as to what supports it though. So if we tap this, hit record, and the great news is this is supported on all iPads, but it comes down to what language you speak for this to be able to work currently. So currently it's basically available in English transcriptions. So Australian English, English, Canadian English, Ireland English, New Zealand, South Africa, UK, and the US. So that's where it's available as far as English transcriptions. Maybe they'll add different languages throughout the world a little bit later, but that's the only supported languages for now with this feature. But the good news is it's available across all iPads. And then if we tap done, you'll see a little preview of it here in notes. Another thing that's updated this year is more responsive AirPods and controllers. Now the great news again is it's supported across all iPads, but you need AirPods Pro second generation or two with Lightning or USB-C. As long as you have that, you'll actually have better latency and overall responsiveness when you're playing a game. So when you're in game mode, it should be much more responsive and then you'll actually be able to use these and have less latency. And that's true with controllers as well. So if you're using a PS5, controller or maybe an Xbox controller that should respond much better. As you may have already noticed, we have the calculator on both iPads. It carries across to everything and it's available on all the iPads with all of the same calculators as well with math notes. So you've got the convert option, scientific and math notes if you want to use that. So that's included on all of them and they finally brought calculator to iPad. If we go into Safari, one of the new features that Apple added this year has to do with highlighting features when you're in an article. So maybe you're in an article and it's sort of lengthy with a lot of information. Apple can actually highlight that information. Now that's available on all iPads, but only in us English. So for whatever reason, it starts with us English only. The new reader feature is updated as well, where it looks a little bit different. It's a little cleaner and just is nicer to look at overall. This is again, only available for English, but is available in English for Australian, Canadian, English, Ireland, New Zealand, South Africa, UK, and again, the U S so they really need to add some additional languages. I'm sure they will in the future, but that's currently the only options when it launches to the public within maps, there's some updates and within maps, maybe you're looking at a park or something else and you want to look at the topography. There's now topographic maps, but those are only available in the United States and Japan to start. Also the new hiking feature. So maybe you want to hike one of the parks. So if we scroll down here, you can see popular hikes in this park, Yellowstone national park. And then within the park, you'll see the hike itself. This is only in the United States so far. So as there's more national parks around the world, Apple will add those and you'll see all the information for it with the elevation and more within the home app. There will be features coming later this year that are thankfully supported on all iPads to support robot vacuum cleaners. And then there's a new energy feature where it will give us more information based on our local usage. Now that's only available in the United States and only in the Pacific gas and electric region of customers. So you'll need to actually have that. I believe that's in California. Maybe it will come to more electricity providers in the United States later on, but it seems to be mostly in California or the West coast. So that might be added later, letting us know our overall electricity usage. Now, as far as any other feature, well, the great news is everything else that's available in iPad OS 18 is available on all the other devices. What that means is if we go to their main page here, customization, as you can see here with the dark icons, you can customize all of the different things outside of Apple intelligence with notes is there in addition to changing text color the calculator update, all of the customization I mentioned and much more. So all of those are carried across to all of the iPads along with the new photos app, new emoji expressions and things like that. So it's great that we seemingly only have a few things that are not carried across to all iPads. So I think that's great news for everyone. So let me know what your favorite feature of iPad OS 18 is and what iPad you're using. And will you be updating to iPad OS 18? I think it's a great update. It's not huge for iPad, but does bring all of the features from iOS 18 as well. Of course, I'll link this wallpaper in the description like I normally do. And if you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like as always. Thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.